I really enjoy using pallet wood for projects. It's completely free. There's always businesses nearby giving them away. So there's always pallets available. And you're taking something old, probably worn out, creating something brand new with it, being creative. There's a lot of benefits to doing pallet projects. But if you've ever done them, you know that the worst part is breaking down the pallets. It can be real tempting to just want to go buy brand new wood that doesn't need all the labor just to get it ready. I've used hammers, flat bars, pry bars, crowbars. I've even used saws and cut the nails straight off of the pallet before to try to get them broke down. It wasn't until I went to Amazon and spent $50 roughly $50 on a pallet breaker, such as this one right here, that I really didn't mind breaking them down anymore. This is a difference maker, so if you do a lot of pallet projects, I recommend getting one. So once you get all the boards off and the pallet broken down, of course you gotta clean up your boards. You're gonna have nails stuck in them still, sometimes staples, broken pieces, such as this one right here, you can see that half of it is broken. Well, I'm going to still use that board because I have some shorter length pieces that I'll need, so I set it aside for later. And then I'm just going get, to get started on taking my time and uh, spending some alone time out in the garage and cleaning up these boards. I find it very calming and peaceful. That's kind of why I'm starting this channel and doing this is I am not an expert in any craftsman stuff, but I find a lot of joy just spending time out there by myself doing little stuff like this. As you see, I need use some needle nose pliers to straighten the nails a lot of times. Just hammer them back a little bit. Use the nail or the hammer, excuse me, to pry out the nail heads. And then as you see on my workbench, another tool I have that I often use is a nail punch. You can get sets of three of them for like $7 at Lowe's. And they're a lifesaver if you have a broken off nail that's stuck in a board you can't necessarily get to pry it out. You would just stick that nail punch on the busted portion of a uh, nail and then you would use your hammer and drive that and it'll push it out just enough that you can use the backside of the hammer to pull the nail head out. I also have done pallet projects often with very thick, heavy oak pallet wood. And with those ones, I have an electric wood planer that I've often used to plane down the boards after I clean them up. The very first time I did it, I made the mistake of not taking the staples and nails all out, and I chewed up and destroyed blades very quickly. And not to mention it was, I'm sure, a safety hazard. So I've learned and I don't make that mistake anymore, but uh, either way, those, those oak pallets plain down make a very nice, very good, clean, quality looking piece of wood that you'd never know came off of a pallet. So now I've got everything cleaned up. Of course, I take my longest boards, the ones that were part of the framework of the pallet, they will be the trunk of my Christmas tree. So then the next longest boards that were left there, they're going to be my feet. And I want my feet to all be the same length. So I'm going to measure right down the middle and just cut them in half. I'll need four feet for each tree. And as you see here, just something I've done in my workshop in my garage, taken a metal yardstick and secured it to my workbench so I don't always have to be grabbing a tape measure to measure everything. It makes it very convenient and easy when I'm doing quick, simple measurements like this. Line them up, use my square, and make my, uh, my line so I know where to cut, and it doesn't get much easier. So now I'm ready to go. I have my trunk there as you see, and I have my feet. And you put your first nails through. 
Now, what you see next is me trying to demonstrate for you. I've made this mistake multiple times. This is the proper way, putting, having the feet run with each other. This is the wrong way. I've put one on before and then put a second one on the backside and when I go for my third, I realize that they will not, I can't keep going, can't keep putting more feet on it. So you have to put one on and then butt the next one up against it as is seen here. And then I'll spin it and add the third and then finally the fourth. At this point in the video, I was having some issues with loading my, with my nails loading in the nail gun for some reason. And you saw me disconnect the air hose. Never mess around if you're having issues, never mess around with it while your air hose is connected. As you see with the tree on the left, the feet had notches in them and I wanted to make sure to put them opposite of each other and not like one on that right side foot and then one on the forward foot. So always thinking ahead of details like that is kind of important. And I started my, my uh, chop saws set at a 45 degree angle and I made one cut flipped the board over, made another cut almost at the same peak, which creates a T. What you see here I'm pausing is the measurement I took. So that triangle at the very top, the longest measurement at the bottom of it, I take that measurement, let's say it's a seven inches. I don't know what it was at this time, but if it was seven inches, the top of the next cut needs to be less than that. So I would want to make it about five inches. To me, that's important. You can make them where they go straight down a line with each other. In fact, I did them a little too close to the same measurement on these trees for what I prefer. But if it's, you know, if it's notched so that there are layers to your tree, I think that makes a big difference and makes them look a lot better. Starting from the top and working down, just as I do here, that's, that's the way to get it done in my opinion, and I just keep making bigger and bigger, uh, longer I should say, quote, branches. Another important note is that when I was using that uh, nail gun, I never put my hands behind on the board that I was nailing. I would hold them out to the left or below or above because you never know when your nails are going to go through what you're working on, so I'm just always cautious and conscious of where your hands are when using a nail gun. This is the process and uh, I just carried on. This um, keeps going till I had no boards that were that were long enough. I went to as long as I could get them. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you um, the finished product. I didn't didn't film painting them. I mean, that's pretty basic. You know, just threw some paint on them. Uh, had a couple little touch-up things, put some longer nails in the feet because I actually had the feet fall off already on me when some people were doing some work. And uh, so I put some longer nails in because I realized they weren't going to hold very well. And then the nails I initially put in... Uh, poked through the back a little bit when I used the nail gun so what I did was took another piece of the plank of the uh, pallet wood and I just screwed it on the back side so you know so you can grab onto it you're not going to be poking yourself or your kids get poked or anything like that so uh, anyway just want to come back and sum it up real quick that's what they look like when they're done <laughs>